Hello and welcome to Destiny Digits. This is the Life Path number three reading. So using your birth date, you can figure out your Life Path number. The link is in the description box. Your Life Path talks about an opportunity that you have, almost like the path that you came here to walk out in this life. And as a three, you are like very loving and jovial and joy filled. Like threes are very expressive, creative. They like to be in many scenes, but like different scenes. Like they like a, a variety of, uh, we'll take these two that flipped. Um, they like a variety of social settings. So that's like festivals, cigar lounges, um, you know, dive bars, paint and sip, stuff like that. Like threes are kind of chameleons, even in their dress. Um, they can be really expressive. Their clothes can be art. But these are people who are social, sociable and vulnerable in nature. And so your ability to communicate, to express, to really um, apply art to life is it could be a part of your uh, your path. Like it, it 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 is significant to how you show up and walk out your path in this world. So far, we've got two cards that come out. So first card is where are you? This talks about the current space that we're in, and we have true offering. True offering takes what can takes what can be an unbearable cross and returns it to love. Let me think about this again. True offering. True offering takes what can be an unbearable cross and returns it to love. Okay. And so this is about, um, you know, sometimes we're in situations that seem like they can be overbearing, stifling. They can feel massive, heavy, almost oppressive. <clears throat> but this is saying that, like, in those situations, we almost have to give it to something higher than us. So whatever that is for you, that would be like spirit, divine, ancestor, spirit guides, whatever it is. But it's almost like releasing anything that that would bring shadow to us, that would dim our light. It's almost like taking those moments and, and not allowing them to consume us, but embracing them, but then releasing them, freeing ourselves of the energy that they brought to us, right? Um, yeah. So that's the current we're space we're in. Uh, ridding self of something that we once thought was so oppressive, but we can return it. And literally by releasing ourselves, that's like being in the act of love. Like allowing something to go, offering something um, to be released. Like, you know, how people say, not my cross to bear. It's almost like being in that space. Like, you know, this really isn't mine to carry. Like... You know, I disconnect from that. Current task is non-duality. Let your authentic humanity let your authentic humanity shine forth while also bowing to the inner divine. You can become fluent at doing both. Hmm. And so this is like being one. This is like there's no either or. Everything is everything. At, at the same time, right? And so I don't have to choose between living a spiritual life versus living this 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 life that, you know, was assigned to me. This is about me just being authentic. And when I am authentic, I can embrace and acknowledge the significance of the divine, but I can also walk in in my purpose, I can also walk in what I am divinely assigned to do, right? So this is about being fluent in your relationship, your language, and your expression of the divine as it shines through you. Like, what does your inner divine look like? So yes, we know that the divine exists, but when it exists with, it, with you, what is that expression like? And it's in that expression when you are most authentic. Right? And so that's your task. How can we, how can you be most authentic in this moment? All right, we've got it. I'll do that again. We had a few too many. All right, so let's talk about your difficulties. What could be a difficulty at this moment? Again, we'll take them. All right. So current difficulty, we have inner power. 
give me the courage and the power to do what must be done. And so this is kind of like that strength card in tarot. And so this is you maybe not always knowing or accepting that you're stronger than you know. And sometimes we don't know our strength because we have this inner dialogue that tells us we're not capable or it convinces us of all the negative outcomes just because you know, and then because of all the possibilities of how things can go wrong, we just never even start. And so there's something right now that has to be done. And so we have this card of like, this is not my cross to bear. I'm going to release this, which I often in this moment, I feel like is perception. I feel like this is cleansing uh, of a perspective that we have that really isn't benefiting us in the space that we're in. And so once I free, once I elevate this perspective, once I like find the love in the moment that I'm in and I, I don't see it as a threat, then I step into, okay, um, this is not a threat. Like this is the moment authentically, I'm pushed, I'm urged to show up, to express myself in this way. And so that's about really engaging with the divine. Like, what am I here to do? Like, right, I am divinely designed. And what is my design consist of? And so once we can answer those questions, you figure out kind of like where you're standing, what your task is. But the challenge is really doing it right? We can accept it. We can acknowledge it. We can feel it. But how do I really put that into action? And so that's that inner power. That's that strength, needing the courage to do what must be done. And in this moment, that could be the challenge right now. Uh, for for uh, strength, what is your strength? We have detachment. It says with detachment, you can finally feel whole inside with or without the fulfillment of a particular desire. Ironically, that's often when it's fulfilled. And so this is like, listen, there's something that I'm really like wanting and desiring, um, you know, but I know if it's for me, it's for me, Right. And in the process of me figuring out if it's really coming to me, if this is where things are leading, um, I can be occupying myself in a different energy that kind of pulls it in. And so this is like detaching from the outcome and just knowing that in this moment, I'm enough, I'm fulfilled. Like if it's not like I'm not fulfilled until I get this thing, this is like being like, yo, like it's this moment right now where I'm whole, I am complete. I am fulfilled. I am content. My desires are met now. Yes, there is this thing that I'd like, but listen, even with without it, if this was my last moment, if this was my last breath, how can I make peace and find contentment in this, right? And so it's when we start to live in those moments and find the beauty in the now that we just kind of snowball effect bring in the things that would continue to bring us that feeling, right? And so it's only through detachment that we can find joy in the now. And so this is a strength. What would help you in this situation where, you know, courage is a difficulty? Courage is a difficulty because we're so attached to it happening. We're so attached to this outcome and we're so afraid that if this outcome doesn't happen this way, like, ugh, you know, so then we don't move. But have the courage to move because you've detached from the outcome and you're just in love with the experience, right? And then the goal, your goal, we have divine love. It says when you offer everything to the divine with deta with detachment, you know, like when you offer everything to the divine with detachment, you begin a love affair with spirit. Yo, like that's, that's like being in a relationship with the divine, like, all right, honey, you take over, you know, like that's, that's what it is. That's the relationship that you have. And you're like, I don't even have to wish upon a star because it's, it just is what it is. Like the divine has me, like, this is what we do. You know, I trust, I believe. So I can just be so in love and loving the moment and loving the life I'm living, um, and I'll just wait on it. I don't even have to like wait on it, like look out the window, wait on it. But I can just enjoy the now because what's for me is for me, right? All right. At the bottom of that deck, we have trust. Hey, and that's what it is. Uh, it says, allow me divine to give you my deepest longings, trusting you to know exactly how to handle them. And so listen, 
you, spirit trusts you, the divine trust that that you know how to do and you can do what's what's needed with the things, the blessings that are going to be dis- bestowed upon you, right? And because you know in your heart, you're a good person, you operate in integrity, like you're showing up for others, you're not, um, you know what I mean? Like because, because you know that th- to your core, you mean well for self and others. You can trust that that you are recognized in in the spiritual realm for that. And things are just they have your name written on them, you know. All right. So we'll get two more tarot cards. So far, we've got the Nine of Cups, the High Priestess, the Nine of Swords. Oh. The Wheel of Fortune, uh, the Page of Pentacles, and an extra card. I'm going to put that one here. The Two of Cups came out. And at the bottom of the tarot, uh, tarot deck, we have the Moon. <clears throat> and so the Moon talks about things that are unseen. It could be because it's secret. It could be because it's it's just sub- hidden from our subconscious. Like it's just not in our awareness. It's not something that we're picking up on or maybe we're reading a situation incorrectly. And so the truth has escaped us. Um, yeah, but the moon is almost a, ca- a card that says things are not as they appear, right? Like clarity is still um, surfacing. And so that's the space that you, um, I'm sorry, the fireworks are very loud, if you can hear that. Um, So I'm just going to pull these message cards and we'll get into the reading. So we talked about the current space we're in, kind of like that's not my cross to bear, like I'm going to return this to love, like I'm going to live in this space of love, I'm not going to carry any burdens. And so this is nine of cups, this is about being selfless. We talked about being fulfilled and content in the current space that we're in. And so this is saying like, listen, my peace is my priority, right? Like, Though I don't have time for negativity. I don't have time for things that are going to disturb what I'm focusing on right now, right? So anything that comes into my life um, that seems to be heavy or unbearable or anything that seems to threaten the sanctuary that I'm trying to build around myself, um, I'm going to have to return it to sender, right? And this, and and that's about, and that's about saying like, you know, I allow the divine to remove things that are not for me, right? Not only does it have to be removed, but I also am free to release them. I don't have to wait to be told. Like, you know what I mean? Once I know that my peace is it, then, then I have to kind of live by that. Um, and so, when peace is our foundation, anything we built is, is will last, right? Because we've built it in an environment that is healthy in an environment that is nurturing, right? And so that's that nine of cups energy, like being like, you know, after the nine of cups is a 10 of cups. And the only difference is that we've, we can now add others. We can, we've built an environment that is so beautiful that it's, that it, that it, that it's stable enough, um, for others to live off of, right? And so listen, uh, the message card is when I'm in alignment with the love of the universe, peace cannot be disrupted. Yo, like, I love when that happens. So we literally just talking about making our peace our priority. And threes, I feel like you are stepping in unapologetically into you. You're realizing that the time is now for you to do you, be you, live you, release anything that obstructs that, right? I feel like that's what it is. This is about you being in alignment with you, right? And so 
that is when we are most attractive. That is when we are most content and fulfilled. When we are living the life that is truly us, it resonates us at our core because, we, because we've created it, we've co-created it, we've manifested it, like we are intentionally living this. Yes. And so that's the space we're in about really prioritizing our peace so that we can have a jump off point for what's to come. And our current task, current task is to be authentic, is to really be us, to be you, right? And to realize that you can be human and you can be spirit and you can have this relationship with the divine. And the relationship that you have with spirit is is what lives inside of you through your own expression, through your own creativity. And so never feel like you have to choose this or this, whatever is in you is the expression of spirit. There's nothing outside of you that defines that. It's what's in you. And so this is about living in that space, allowing that to be your display, um, your true identity. And so the high priestess here talks about, you know, somebody who knows something, even if, you know, high seek, it talks about secrets, but it talks about like hidden, you know, it talks about information just like intuitively knowing something you didn't even have to be told just know right and so this I feel like this talks about like at your core you just know what you know about self about you about the divine right and so once you get once you understand the truth of who you are and what this experience is calling you to do the next thing is action right? That's the next thing is to act on, on, on the spiritual knowledge, the spiritual understanding that you just have. Um, the message card says, instead of praying for an outcome, I pray for the highest good of all. And so this is like intuitively knowing that the divine is really always on our side. We don't always have to have the answers, but what we do know is that when we are authentically us and living our truth, things are always going to work out, right? Because we're in alignment with what we know to be our most like real version of self. And so listen, it's, you know, there are levels to this, right? So our task is to step into the truth that we know about self, but the difficult thing is acting on that truth. So the inner power is saying like, please, like I just need the courage to do what I know I have to do. But the nine of swords here is literally about having nightmares, nightmares because we're terrified of what's to come. Well, we think things are going to go wrong. We think, you know, things aren't going to turn in our favor. Like we're just worrying all the time and we're not allowing things to play out. There's, you know, worrying is never effective. Like it's a misuse of energy, right? And not remembering how amazing and, and, incredible this human existence is, when we don't remember that, worry can take over, right? Worry just forgets our worth. It forgets our value. And sometimes we're in situations that are a little scary, sketchy, and unknown, but it doesn't mean we automatically lose our value or our worth just because we're not understanding something. It just means that we're not understanding. We just don't know right? And so when we start to worry, we think that we're not supposed to be in this moment. This moment is too big for us. We're not capable. Um, But that's false. If this is a moment you're living in, then it's because you're supposed to be living in it. You're meant to be here, even when you don't have all the answers, right? Intuitively, you can tap in, but mentally, things may not always make sense. And we don't, sometimes we attempt to fill in the gaps with our own fears and anxieties, and so when you're being called to have courage and to take action, it's, it's with the fear. Do it afraid, right? Do it scared. The message card for that one, it says, instead of worrying about the future, I know all is well when I'm aligned in the moment. Look at that. So what does it mean to be aligned in the moment? We're not going to worry, but when action is required, I'm going to do what I have to do. 
right? Even if I don't know all the answers. And so that could be the challenge right now to really take that worry and to do something else with it. How can I take my worries about what's to come? How can I take my worries about this outcome, this thing? I really want it to go a certain way, like, but I'm really not in control over it, right? Um, and so let me just really accept that truth. I have no control over this outcome. Yes, this is my desire, but in the end, what I do have control over is now, is how I show up, how I implement myself, how I apply myself to life. And so the current strength in this situation, how we can overcome this is with detachment. It's when we detach that we finally feel whole, like knowing, listen, even if this thing doesn't turn out, I'm good, right? That's that nine of cups energy, like intuitively knowing you're good, that you don't have to fear what's to come, right? Because you've detached from the outcome. But the beautiful thing is we have the wheel of fortune followed by the page of pentacles, right? And the extra card was the two of cups and then the divine love. So this could be a connection, could be a significant relationship. Um, but nonetheless, this talks about like everything you're worried about is not necessarily the reality that's going to be presenting to you. Detachment says detach from the outcome so that you can just enjoy this moment and be fulfilled in the now. That's the energy that we want to feel. When this wheel of turns, the page of pentacles talks about a message of prosperity, like something that's coming in that could be fruitful, something, you know, the page of pentacles is like the seed, right? And it's like you're getting all these ideas because you know that the seed has value. You're thinking of all the things that it, that you can do with it. And so when when you plan it, it's going to materialize into this. And so that's that energy of the page of pentacles. It's like excitement. It's new possibility of, of what's to come, right? But this nine of swords is not acknowledging that the possibility is there. The possibility is coming um, because we're just afraid that the outcome that we really want, but guess what? It's the outcome that is divinely designed for the good of all that is most appropriate for us. And that's that surrender that we have to step into. The message card says, I honor how I want to feel. I honor how I want to feel. So how would you want to feel when you're thinking about your future, when you're thinking about what's to come, when you're thinking about the outcome that you want to have, how does that outcome feel to you? You're excited, you're joyous, you're content, and that is what you honor. You don't honor the outcome, you just honor the feelings that it will give you. And that's the space that we live in, that fulfillment, that contentment. That's where we feel whole inside. And so we just honor those feelings by living in that and not by worrying. We don't, you know, it's... It's knowing that we have access to that now and that this desired outcome is not an indication of whether or not we can be content, right? Just knowing that this life is set up for us to always win, even when it looks like it's not, it's always going in our favor. And so the goal of this, we have divine love. It says, when you offer everything to the divine with detachment, you begin a love affair with spirit. So listen, second time about detachment. So this is saying threes, you need to trust. You need to pour everything you have into the divine. You know, show up in this life knowing that without a doubt, this opportunity is promising. This page of pentacles, you know, the page is a, is a youthful energy, you know, and um, that's being excited. That's anticipating only the greatest, right? That's not thinking about all that can go wrong, but that's like being so naive, like just being so excited, like just knowing it's only going to go right. And maybe others would think that's naive, but I'm just saying that's the space that you live in when you trust the divine, when your relationship with spirit is truly, truly secure, nothing shakes you right? As soon as something comes in to shake you, you offer it back. You send it. You're like, yo, this is disturbing my like peace. Like I'm fulfilled. I'm content. I'm not going to believe that I'm not. I'm going to turn this around. And it's okay to acknowledge when our energy is kind of shifting, you know? Um, and our message says, when I lean on the faith of the universe, peace becomes real. Peace becomes real. So like the universe is your team player. Like that's your co-pilot. And remember, when we're in situ 
our co-pilot is always with us. We are never alone, ever, ever, ever. And so that is who we rely on when we're feeling fearful about what's to come, when we're not sure how to act on expressing and living this life that we want to like really, you know what I mean? Really reflect us. Um, and so I feel like the relationship that is most significant right now is the relationship with spirit. And that relationship really begins with self because spirit's within you. And the question is, how is spirit expressing itself through me? And when you live that life, that's true. Uh, two of Cups, that was the extra card that comes out. And, you know, two is about partnership. It's about being um, diplomatic and warm and understanding. And I feel like this is an energy that's available to you. And sometimes spirit sends us partnerships that bring us this energy. And that's just a reflection of what the divine is offering you. This could be the relationship that you, you know, between you and the divine, this could be a significant soulmate relationship, but nonetheless, there can be a connection that is an expression of what the divine is bringing to you. Right. Um, I don't think I read this one. At the bottom of the deck, it said, thank you, universe, for helping me see beyond the limits of fear. Thank you for expanding my perceptions so that I can see what is of the highest good. And so threes, this is really about elevating yourself to see the bigger picture here. Um, whatever you're wanting wants you, but you won't know that unless you live as if it's already here. And when you're living as if it's already here, it's not just about smiling all day. It's about you're, I'm li I'm smiling because everything I do is at my core authentically me. Like I'm acting on me. You know, I'm finally living me and I'm detaching from, from the fear of doing that, right? And watch how this thing unfolds, right? And it's just trusting. And remember the moon on the bottom of the tarot deck, um, it just talks about things being unknown, things being hidden, not clear. Um, but but the moon card, you know, it it it's a card that says it's not clear because it's not supposed to be clear. It's not known because it's not known. Like, you know, the sun card would have come out if it was supposed to or the ace of swords. But anything that you don't know is not yet revealed because it's not yet supposed to. So embrace the embrace the blindness, right? Em embrace what you don't know and just say, when it's time, it's time. But what I do know is me. What I do know is what brings me alive. You know, I do know that worrying is not in my benefit, you know? I do know it's important how I want to feel, so I'm just going to feel that way now. Fulfillment is already here. Peace is already here. All right, threes, I'm hoping this reading was helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by. Take care.